front door or the road an uh, called <laughs> ants, the ants were. First, the ants created a black hole. Colonies gathered together from all over the world and twisted themselves into a hurricane. Humming eggshell bodies and eyelash legs demolished cities. The collective weight of their bodies tugged at the atmosphere. The earth, the earth dipped a degree to the royal left. We began sliding. Scrambling, one, one on top, one top of. An area of double, of, sorry, an era of double exposure. Ants over more ants. Buildings restored in their image, blanketed by the static of living bodies. A residual hum of movement, of an another. Borders became a thing of the past. Outlines lost under thick haze of squirming insects. Ants hand in hand, turning the whole globe black. Turning it whole, the whole globe turning. Crumbling. The ants were apologetic about the orbital shift. They miscalculated. The heat was an elastic band, tightening before the inevitable snap. They began combusting. A trillion sea salt firecrackers bursting out of existence, barely louder than a car horn. Thank you. And um, I'm also reading an excerpt. Is it good? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, I'm also reading an excerpt from um, my short story in the previous voice works. Um, and it's called And People Howling for Their Dogs. Um, So June stays. She forgets about the holiday money. She forgets about the pinching and the eye rolling. She just sees vases upon vases of flowers. They litter their apartments. Their apartment. Petals decay into stinking, slippery carpets. But June's too busy buying vases to notice. On top of all that, June's nerves are terrible. She feels like she is always holding her breath. Her chest is an outstretched rubber band, taut, snappable. Her face has a blue tinge to it from hours of only sipping air from between her teeth. June's girlfriend likes to tease her about this. At June's bluest, she will blast bands called slit shaft and skin twins or bleeding aluminium. Bands that reek of car horns and sample audio of people being murdered over triple zero phone calls. These make June bounce into the air like a cat and the droplets of blue in her cheeks blossom into deep sinking purples. She has to run outside gasping for air to remind herself of all the breathing she needs to catch up on. When she eventually walks back inside, there'll be a bouquet on the table. So you see why she wants to stay. Who else is going to tend to all these flowers? Except some days she wants to leave, but to nowhere in particular. She starts walking, and then she doesn't stop walking. One day, she finds herself at the park by the river. She used to come here all the time before she and her girlfriend met. At night, she'd break in with friends, Friends whose faces have been now turned mossy, grey. She'd sit with her legs wide, like a dude on the bus, arms hung loose over her knees. She'd swig beer. She was never cold. Someone always had a jacket to lend. She'd laugh and throw her friends high up into the air. Once, she threw someone so far that they landed on the very top of an oak tree. I think they still might be up there, smiling. The world was never ending below them, so they stayed there. And she stayed too, until, at some point, she left. A drop of rain lands squarely by the toe of her slipper. But it's not rain. It's sweat dripping off her nose. She was so distracted, head bent down, watching the little thunders of leaves, that she forgot to look up and notice the sun glaring at her. June pulls off her scarf and coat, and then her mittens and her cardigan, and then the fur vest zipped up to her neck and the woolen skivvy beneath that. She makes a bed out of all her winter clothes and curls into it, nesting. When I am reborn, I think I would like to try my hand at being a microwave, she, she sighs. A nice big one, sturdy, with some sort of song for the alarm, something that everyone likes. What an important job to make things warm. She looks over at a pigeon near her. She imagines her stomach opening like a hinged door, placing it inside, the bird curling up, head on tail, and falling asleep, emitting gentle coos on every exhale. She sees herself by the river, laughing with blank faces. She turns to look up into the sky. Its blueness is nothing like her. Even at her most constricted, there is always red, around the rim of her eyes, the dip of her mouth, reminding her that she is not expansive. Her blueness is a state and not a being. She is bound together by her own outline, hundreds of shifting horizons. 
Thank you very much.